Godsworn is a brand new mythological RTS hitting Steam early access today. It channels classics like Warcraft 3 and Age of Mythology to create a new spin on classic mechanics and gameplay styles. And while there's definitely some fairly obvious inspiration here, Godsworn does a lot to distinguish itself from real-time strategy games, both old and new. As mentioned, it's in early access today, a few hours after this video goes live, and it's available for a price of $29.99 US dollars. We'll talk about value near the end of this video, as I do have a few things to say about it, but let's first start with what the game actually is, what's available in this initial release, what's coming down the line, and, most importantly, whether I think you should pick the game up for yourself. So, without further ado, here's my review of Godsworn. Godsworn takes its setting from the Northern Crusades of the 12th and 13th centuries, where Christian monarchs invaded the pagan territories of Baltic, Finnic, and Slavic peoples in modern day countries like Estonia, Finland, Poland, Latvia, and Lithuania. Off the bat here, I'll be the first to admit that I know basically nothing about this period of history, so I apologise if I overly simplify it or incorrectly interpret anything about it. This kind of stuff isn't taught in New Zealand history classes, as you could probably guess. But I did find myself in a few Wikipedia rabbit holes while writing this script, so I do thank Godsworn for that. Godsworn's interpretation obviously involves a mythological element to complement its historical setting as well. Kind of like how Age of Mythology used its Norse, Greek, and Egyptian settings as a base for the fantastical. Here you'll find deities of Baltic myth take physical form, like Saula, the solar goddess from Lithuanian and Latvian legend, or Ausrin, Aus Ausrin, Ausrina's passion will remind them of our might. That one, deity of the morning star from Lithuanian myth. There are also mythological beasts and monsters that feature prominently, such as the Pukas, a dragon-like serpent from Latvian folklore that breathes fire and lives to protect the wealth of its owner, very based. Though according to this reddit post, there are different uses of the word in different Baltic countries, so if any Baltic viewers in the comments can clear that up for me, that'd be great. Again, basically everything here is new to me, and I'd assume that it would be the same for lots of people playing Godsworn. I'd love to see some sort of in-game codex that gives some lore on the characters and monsters featured in the game as a way to showcase some of the real life history that inspired what is ultimately a very niche setting that I don't know if I've seen in any other game, certainly not in an RTS. The campaign sees you playing as one of the game's featured deities as you experience the crusades from the defending side. It features full voice acting, simple but effective in-game cutscenes, and the option to be played in co-op with your friend taking a deity of their own. But we'll get to the mechanics in a bit. First, the presentation. Starting us off, Godsworn is a really good looking game probably 90% of the time, maybe 95%. Overall, I love the graphical style, and I think it presents a very cozy vibe that reminds me of the timeless art styles of games like Warcraft 3, Age of Empires 3, and Stronghold. It's not insanely detailed or pushing the industry forward with innovative technologies or real-time ray tracing or whatever, but it's very cohesive, has great readability, and fits the setting and themes of the game very well. The standouts for me visually are the hero designs and the buildings, of all things, for the former, I love how unique they are and how their designs reflect the myth that they're pulled from. They're larger than life by design, and I mean, just look at this dude, what a giga chat. And for the latter, I love how they collapse, yes, but also just how they look. I don't know quite exactly what it is about them, but they're just, they're just so cozy. They feel like the kinds of places you'd want to go after a day of batting away Christians from your land to have a brew and relax, you know? But yeah, they do look great when they fall over as well. Presentation wise, I do think the game is quite polished for early access. The UI all seems to make sense, and I don't think I've seen any obvious temporary assets or anything like that. Animation wise, however, I do think there needs to be a bit more work done here. 
Some of the larger units in particular do exhibit some floatiness, and overall I think the game needs a bit of a, and how would you call it, like a crunch, crunchiness pass? Stuff like unit reactivity and sound effects are in particular what I think need to be crunched up. Things are like they're too soft, like they're too rounded, not sharp enough. It doesn't feel like these units are properly fighting, clashing swords and smashing into shields. And a lot of the sound effects, to me at least, just feel muted and a bit dull. Compare a simple fight here in Godsworn to one in Warcraft 3. The soundscape is totally different, as well as the animations. And I know we're comparing to a, you know, one of the best RTS games ever made here, but hey, it's also 20 years old, and I think we should aim high, you know? I'm sure you see what I mean here. It's nothing that can't be worked on, but I do think it's an important thing for the devs to look at throughout the early access period. It's critical that fights feel lively, visceral, and impactful. And right now, that's probably the biggest thing that makes it obvious that Godsworn is an indie game developed by just two people. Bet you didn't realise that, huh? Because yeah, on all other fronts, Godsworn certainly gives the impression that it's a game with a much higher budget and a much larger development team. The core gameplay of Godsworn imitates classic real-time strategy and will instantly be familiar to anyone who's been around the block once or twice. The goals are as follows. Gather resources to expand your base and train units, progress through unit upgrades to increase the strength of your armies, and level up your hero to unlock more powerful abilities to help turn the tide of battle. Very Warcraft 3-like. But as I alluded to earlier, there's a lot of mechanics here that differ from what you're used to, and I dare say they help to make Godsworn feel quite different to play in the moment, despite overall featuring a lot of similarities to games that you've played before. Let's start with your shrine. This acts as your home base, where worshippers come to pray and generate faith, one of Godsworn's four resources. Worshippers come on a timer, and there's a limited amount on the number of them that you can have at any one time so you can't just spam out villagers like in most other RTS games. You'll need to manage your available worshippers as they arrive to keep your village going by building new buildings and gathering the game's three other resources. Thankfully, there are some helpful mechanics that help to make this a smooth process, such as how any idle villagers will quickly begin generating faith back at the shrine, and how you can easily assign villagers to specific tasks by clicking the UI icons, like here, when I can build these towers way quicker by assigning 5 people to do the work in just a couple of clicks. A lot of this base level stuff is managed by the game, which is a cool idea. Resources are gathered by building structures around things like berry bushes for food, forests for wood, and copper for wealth, among others. Once the building is up, a worshipper will be assigned to it, and will generate an amount of that resource per tick. If you want to increase the amount, simply assign a second worshipper or pay for the research to either increase the base resource number, or add a new worker slot. Things do vary between the factions, but the core ideas are pretty much the same across all of them. Speaking of, there are four heroes to choose from right now, with three of them falling into the pagan mythology, and one into the Christian mythology. There's planned to be eight total by the time 1.0 rolls around, so I'm hopeful that we get a third distinct group to go alongside the two that we have already. Choosing a hero determines a few things, it changes your available buildings and units, while also coming with a selection of 10 abilities that you unlock as you level up your hero, who takes physical form on the battlefield. Leveling your hero is done via combat, which, like Warcraft 3, can start with fighting creep mobs across the map. Taking out these mobs also comes with its own benefits, like instantly providing a new worshipper to join you. Creeps can only get you so far though, and after a few levels, you'll be getting more abilities by fighting the enemy. As you gain levels, you can unlock abilities that are either cast by your hero in their vicinity, or cast as a faction ability at any time. These range from things like area of effect damage, healing casts, spawning towers, spawning units, and more, you get the idea. The range is vast and each tree is totally unique, meaning there are currently 40 different abilities across the four heroes. They bring a level of excitement to combat that keeps things fresh, 
but the unit and building roster plays its part in the dance as well. Each unit has a few tiers of upgrades that can be applied to it, that keep even the most basic units relevant throughout the whole game. And later, as you level up your shrine, you'll get access to expensive and powerful mythological creatures, as well as impactful structures like a castle, or this temple that periodically spawns units for you at the cost of faith. Overall, I really enjoy the gameplay flow of God's Horn. There's great variety across its heroes, units, and buildings, and there's a large enough number of upgrades and high-end rewards to chase that make sure the game stays interesting throughout. My one hope is that they add some more defensive items to the game, or at least defensive options. Right now, there's only a single tower and wall, so I'd love to see some more unique towers, maybe a light wall, you know, stuff like that. Also, I think incorporating more stuff from Warcraft 3 wouldn't actually be a bad idea at all. Taking the mechanics of hiring units and mercenaries from buildings around the map, for example, or buying items to equip on your hero would be things I'd love to see here. And maybe a way to get more than one hero on the field at any one time could be nice too. I know your hero choice is a very important one here, but maybe each hero could have some sort of sub-options that could join the battle if you did the research and invested the resources to summon them, like a very late game unit summon, for example. Just some ideas, because as I said overall, I think what's here is really great, and it's hopefully only going to get better throughout the early access period as they add more heroes, refine the gameplay, and take feedback from players on what they want and what could be improved. The campaign is fairly short right now, with there currently only being 5 missions. The plan at the end is to have a total of 10 to 15 missions on launch, and to their credit, some of the later ones do take a while here. The campaign can be played co-op with a friend, or you could have that slot be filled by the computer. I found the teammate AI to be pretty good honestly, with them generally just backing you up as you take the lead throughout the missions. In my experience though, as is with most cases, it's best played with a friend, as that just multiplies the fun factor. But you can absolutely play it solo, no doubt about it. I'll say though, some of the later missions are pretty tough, even on normal, so just be ready for that. Then you've got Skirmish. It accommodates up to 8 players in any mix of player or computer controlled slots, across up to 4 teams. And there's a decent number of maps to choose from. These, along with the challenge maps, will be built out throughout early access. And on a personal note, I do really love how they included challenge maps at all. There's only two right now, with both being wave defense style horde modes, but they're super fun with friends as they can both accommodate up to three players. I'm looking forward to see how these evolve over time, and I'd love to see some challenges that aren't just fighting off waves of enemies. Perhaps some set scenarios where you need to complete objectives or solve some sort of puzzle that could be incorporated. That'd be super cool. I reckon they should just have fun with it. Otherwise, throughout the early access period, the devs are going to be adding more heroes, with two coming before 1.0 and the other two with the final release, as well as visual and audio improvements, support for more languages, as well as improving how the AI works. And I'm sure there'll be more things that crop up as well. So then, do I recommend Godsworn? Well, if you read the title, or picked up the vibes from the last 15 minutes or so of this video that you just watched, then you should already know the answer. Yes, I absolutely do. But I can't fully get behind it just yet, although I really do wish I could. I love the setting, I think it's awesome to see something new in this space, and I loved how it's piqued my interest in learning about some of the stuff outside of playing the game. Plus, it's polished, technically very sound, and it runs great, at least on the setups where I tested it. The mechanics take some of the best parts of classic RTS games, while adding their own spin to give it some genuinely unique elements not seen in other strategy games. And finally, I love how the game caters to multiple playstyles. You've got traditional PvP or PvE skirmish, wave defense modes able to be played solo or co-op, as well as the campaign in the same vein. And if the developers deliver on what they've laid out for Godsworn, I think the 1.0 release will be a very solid RTS, with a bunch of content to be enjoyed for many, many hours. However, that price of $29.99 is a bit of a hold up for me. I do think it's on the higher side, especially for an early access release. It's worth noting that there will be a 10% launch discount that will take the edge off, though I'm not sure how long that's going to be around for. Maybe it could launch into 1.0 at a $30 price point, 
but right now I would expect to pay closer to $20 for the amount of content included, as well as the fact that this is the studio's first game and they have no track record they can point to to give buyers confidence that they will fulfill their promises and actually ship this thing in the year or so time frame they've given on their Steam page. Now, full transparency. Personally, I do think they'll do what they say and deliver a complete game, and all my interactions with the devs have been nothing but positive, with them being more than happy to answer all of my nagging questions, and even provided me a second review key for me to test co-op, which was much appreciated. They're also pretty clear in their position that if you don't think there's enough content yet, or want to experience the game in full once it comes out, then you should just wait for the full release, and I definitely respect that move. It'll be up to you to decide if that price point is too high for now, or if you'd rather just wait for a decent sale or a final 1.0 release. Remember, at the end of the day, early access is meant to be a way to support a game's development and get in on the ground floor, so keep that in mind when making a purchase decision of any pre-release game, not just this one. But if you're happy to pay the asking price, you vibe with the setting, and based on what you've seen, think this kind of gameplay and visual style is up your alley, then I can guarantee you that you definitely will not be dissatisfied with Godsworn. Let me know in the comments what you think about the price, and if you do play it, I would love to hear your thoughts. Besides the obvious answers, what old school classic RTS do you think deserves a modern sequel or continuation? I think a proper 2D sequel to the original Stronghold is a great choice, and out of you know everything, it's probably one of the most likely that could possibly happen. I'd just love to see some factions, skirmish multiplayer, more units, more everything. How would you implement drones or drone warfare in an RTS game? Would they fly around autonomously or be called in? And would you like to set their orders like formations or defense attack protocols? That's an interesting question. I think if I had to implement them, I would do some sort of like, set them to patrol an area and then give them behaviors, kind of like in Dark Rain. So you could set them to kind of patrol an area and then say, you know, to prioritize big targets or just scout out and stuff like that. So then they kind of act on their own so they're more like drone-like, but you kind of give them the broad behaviours to act within. What RTS series or universe would you like to be made into a first or third person game where you can explore the world, factions, buildings, and use the various weapons in close-up and personal combat? Kind of like Command & Conquer Renegade. Okay, so this is kind of a weird answer, but I'm going to say Age of Empires 2, which sounds like stupid because like, there's been a lot of fantasy first and third person games. But I'd love to see like an Age of Empires 2 where it takes everything from that game, but then someone's still playing Age of Empires 2 and other people get to play as like Battlefield Commanders or something who take like a third person perspective. Kind of like how you do it in like Mountain Blade. So you'd control like, you know, a commander and then the troops under you would kind of fall under your control. While also having someone be like the Battlefield Commander. Kind of like in like Battlefield 4 with like the commander mode. So you'd have like someone who kind of tries to drive the team in a particular way and then maybe there's like six or twelve people under them who actually command the forces on the ground. I think that'd be super cool. What's your favorite RTS hero unit? It's got to be the Dreadlord from Warcraft 3. He was almost always my first pick. Great abilities. What's your favorite RTS adjacent genre? Probably turn-based tactics, so kind of like XCOM kind of style. If I couldn't say that, then probably like City Builders. I played a lot of City Skylines. So thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support me and what I do here, then you can do so on Patreon or YouTube for as little as $1 a month. You'll join all these legends like Takaya, Bad Ghosts, Sean, Gracebrot4, George, Nedas, John Kaiser, King Thickums, Pavel, Bram, Christian, Dan, Bishop's Arch, Orion, Das Rufkin, and Cameron. Thank you very much. And my Paladins, Johnny, Marika, Age of Cause, Joe, Tank, and Imperian. Thanks very much, everyone. You know, I hugely appreciate it. And thank you all again very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.